I have a written text and I will follow that. But before doing that, I wanted to uh, share with you when we are talking about the way forward, we have to see where we are starting from. In August 2018, when I resumed responsibilities as a former Minister of Pakistan, you are all aware where we stood vis-à-vis -vis the United States. In August 2017, a new South Asia strategy had been announced by this very administration that we will be engaging with. And I don't have to dilate on that. You're all experts and are aware of what that policy was. You're also aware of the fact that we were we had limited access and uh, the environment in which our ambassadors were working, our former ambassador to Washington and former foreign secretary is sitting here, uh, can um, stand testimony to that, the difficult environment that Pakistan was operating in. The impression I got with little interactions that I had, that if there was a consensus, if there was a bipartisan consensus uh, in the US Congress, in this environment of uh, polarized United States, politically polarized United States, it was on Pakistan. and how to deal with Pakistan, and how to treat Pakistan. And I don't have to go into history. You know more than I do. Um, what had the frustrations and the expectations and the disappointments on both sides are well known to you. So, when we look at the way forward, in my view, it has to be realistic. It has to be honest. And we have to assess where we are starting from. In the last 10 months, and there are people I can spot in this very room who have been very generous in giving their time in uh, helping me articulate uh, Pakistan's point of view, in guiding me and sharing their experience uh, with me and I've learned a lot from them. But if I want to condense what I want to say is that the environment was uh, an environment of coercion and we have struggled with some success converting that environment of coercion to cooperation. There was a concerted effort of diplomatic isolation and I can say today that from isolation we have moved towards invitation. Invitation not just to the White House for uh, an engagement, a comprehensive engagement uh, in which there will be a 
you know, one-on-one um, -on -one meeting between the principals. Then there will be a, a you know, a restrictive meeting where the, the political and the military leadership will be engaging uh, with them. And then an extended uh, interaction. And uh, I'm happy to share with you that I was recently invited mm. to Brussels and uh, the European Union signed a new strategic engagement plan with Pakistan. So that is a reflection of the, uh, the, the, the extent uh, to which we have broken that isolationist uh, desire of uh, one of our neighbors. So with this uh, background, I would like to share my views. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here amid friends and familiar faces. Let me begin by congratulating the organizers, especially the IPI, for convening this session of Pakistan-US relations, gathering the foreign policy, defense, economic, and financial experts together in the run-up to the Prime Minister's visit to Washington deserves appreciation. As a politician who has served both in government and in the opposition for a long time, I fully appreciate the relevance and significance of such initiatives. These platforms provide opportunity for candid exchange to touch upon more complex subjects. I would like to share a few personal thoughts on the subject in a rather informal manner. You would agree that Pakistan's relations with the United States have always figured prominently in our foreign policy architecture. This has been a long-standing, consequential and wide-ranging relationship encompassing the domains of economic cooperation, trade, energy, education, science and technology, defense cooperation, law enforcement, as well as security and strategic stability. Admittedly, there have been ups and downs in our bilateral ties with the United States. But if seen from a broader spectrum, this relationship has been mutually beneficial during periods of active cooperation. The inverse proposition is also true. We can therefore conclude that a constructive and cooperative approach is the best option for the two countries to realize the common objectives of peace and security in the region and bring prosperity to the people of South Asia. To give you an oft-quoted example, the extraordinary achievements during the 1980s and post 9-11, success against the common enemy of terrorism, this all became possible through the close and dynamic cooperation between the two countries. Since the assumption of government of Prime Minister Imran Khan in August 2018, we have seen a gradual warming up in relations again. US Secretary of State Michael Pompeo's visit to Pakistan last September presented an opportunity to bring back the momentum in the relationship. 
Secretary Pompeo and Wade and I agreed that the, the desire for resetting the relationship. He held a meaningful dialogue with the leadership and sought Pakistan's support for reconciliation in Afghanistan. My return visit to Washington in October last year helped to further build on the discussions held in Islamabad. I had useful and productive discussions with Secretary Pompeo and National Security Advisor Mr. John Fulton. My interactions on the Capitol Hill helped to share Pakistan's foreign and domestic policy priorities. The U.S. Senators and Congressmen, in my view, were receptive. I also had an opportunity to address at a think tank called USIP in order to reach out to the wider circle of opinion makers in Washington. My conversation with the media was aimed at building Pakistan's narrative and countering <coughs> propaganda. Overall, the visit enabled us to reconnect with Washington and lay foundation for the forthcoming visit of the Prime Minister. The visit of Senator Lindsey Graham to Pakistan in January 2019, whom I also met in Washington, further built up and generated the momentum for leadership interaction between the two countries. He also contributed to enhancement of bilateral trade ties. Now, President Trump has invited the Prime Minister to the White House. We see this invitation as acknowledgement of the inherent importance of the relationship for both sides. Preparing for this important visit, I would like to highlight the following objectives that we wish to achieve from the visit. First and foremost, we believe that moving forward with a constructive and positive approach is in the best interest of both Pakistan and the US. It would therefore be appropriate to work for broader engagement from Afghanistan to bilateral issues, economic and trade cooperation, to peace and stability in South Asia. Secondly, we are mindful of the US priorities regarding Afghanistan. Pakistan has welcomed President Trump's far-sighted decision to pursue a political solution in Afghanistan, which in fact was an endorsement of our own position espoused for a long time. Pakistan has been facilitating the U.S.-Taliban talks in good faith, underscoring that it remains a shared responsibility. We have also engaged closely with U.S. Special Representative on Afghanistan, Reconciliation Ambassador Zalmay Khalilzad. Pakistan's engagement to promote intra-Afghan dialogue and regional consensus in support of Afghan peace process are acknowledged by relevant stakeholders. The joint statement of the recently <coughs> concluded meeting in Beijing in which China, Russia, United States and Pakistan participated welcomed Pakistan's efforts in the peace process. My earlier visit, visits to China, Iran, Russia, Afghanistan, Qatar and UAE 
were part of our efforts to help build regional consensus and garner support for Afghan reconciliation. In the context of intra-Afghan dialogue, there was an Afghan peace conference in Bourbon last month, where representatives of all Afghan political parties participated. The visit of President Ashraf Ghani to Islamabad in June was another expression of Pakistan's commitment to build mutual trust, strengthen bilateral ties, and continue our constructive and supportive role in the peace process. The convergence in Pakistan and US policies on Afghanistan has rekindled hope for resolution of the protracted Afghan conflict that has only brought misery and despondency to the region. Pakistan has borne the brunt of this war in terms of social economic costs, and we continue to host millions of Afghan refugees who deserve to return to their homeland with honor and dignity. We wish a secure and stable Afghanistan at peace with itself and with its neighbors. A peaceful neighborhood is vital for realizing our government's socio-economic development agenda. Thirdly, we see a great potential to deepen and broaden our economic engagement with the U.S. Historically, U.S has been Pakistan's important development, trade, and investment partner. United States is Pakistan's second largest export market after the European Union, accounting for nearly 16% of our total exports. During the financial year 2018-19, the total trade between Pakistan and the U.S. amounted to $6.627 billion. And the U.S. is also among a major foreign investor in Pakistan. And there are great opportunities of uh, wooing more investments into Pakistan. We are looking forward to explore ways and means to enhance this economic and trade cooperation to the mutual benefit of the two countries. Engagement in areas such as economy and finance, energy, science and technology, as well as agriculture, has the potential to intensify a long-term economic growth, stability and human development in consonance with the vision of near Pakistan. Fourthly, Prime Minister also wishes to highlight his vision for peace, progress, and prosperity in South Asia. The United States has important stakes in peace and security in this region, and hence has always been an active player whenever tensions have escalated between Pakistan and India. Recently, the U.S. contribution was helpful in diffusing the tensions post Bulwama. We hope that leadership of the two countries in Washington can agree on the imperative of resuming a sustained and result-oriented dialogue between Pakistan and India aimed at peacefully resolving all disputes, including the core dispute of Jammu and Kashmir. Finally, as we embark upon the first uh, summit-level engagement with the Trump administration, we are confident that this visit will help in ushering an era of stability and prosperity in South Asia and the broader region. In this common objective, both Pakistan and United States will be the joint beneficiaries. 
I wish you all a very productive session. Thank you.